In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really nice puddle effect using PBR Painter. And this is the final result, and as you can see, what I've done is just add puddles to this basic brick material. And as I'll go through in the tutorial, you can do all sorts of things in terms of changing the wet factor of the puddles, the puddle factor, and also how much the puddles fill the cracks of your underlying material. And I'm going to go through this step by step, but I won't be explaining every step in detail. So if you haven't watched any other tutorials for PBR Painter, I definitely recommend doing that first. Finally, I'm using Blender version 4.3 and PBR Painter version 3.2. It's really important you use the latest version of PBR Painter because there is a feature that I will be using that's new to this version. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to make that same material from scratch and explain what I'm doing step by step. So first, I'm just going to add a bricks layer. And this one is just going to be those same image textures that I had on that previous material. So I'm going to use the multi import tool. And I've already got my bricks textures here. So I'm just going to grab the ambient occlusion, color, displacement, roughness, and the normals. Now for a start, this is going to look a little bit strange and Eevee because I need to change some settings in the height. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this from bump only to displacement and bump. Now I'm using a subdivided plane, so I'm actually getting real displacement. So what I want to do is change this from 1 down to something very small like 0.05. So I'm just dropping that scale to make the bricks bump out subtly from the surface. Other than that, I'm going to leave everything the same, and this is my basic underlying material. And I'll just point out that you can have any underlying material that you want. The same process will work for whatever material you choose. Okay, so adding a new layer, and this time I'm going to call this one Puddles. So there's two main things that I need to do. I need to set up the masks, and they're going to define where the puddles sit on the surface. And then I need to add the correct channels to get that puddles effect. So you can do this in either order. I find it easier to add the mask first and then go to the channels afterwards. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a new mask. I'm going to select a smart mask because there's actually a puddles mask which is made just for this purpose. So clicking OK. Nothing's happening because we don't have any channels selected. But if I turn on the preview, I can see that this mask is basically setting up where those puddles are going to go. So this mask has regions that are very white and this is going to define where the puddles are and these other regions are going to define where the wet areas are. And you can do all sorts of things to modify this smart mask. You can change the factor of the puddles to get more or less puddles. And then similarly, you can change the wet factor as well. You can also add all sorts of other effects by changing the roughness of the puddles, the detail of the puddles. But for now, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave it as it is because it looks quite nice without any other changes. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to turn off the preview. And now I'm going to start adding the channels that I need. First thing I'm going to add is roughness, and I'm going to make this a constant value and a very low value because I want the puddles to basically be shiny. And as you can see, it's made it shinier in those regions where the puddles are, but still not looking like puddles. So what I've got to do is actually add the normals. And again, I'm going to leave this as constant. And what this is going to do is it's going to flatten out the normals everywhere that there are these puddles like this. Now, it's still not there yet because I'm using height in my bricks. And so I need to also use height in my puddles. And this is going to help to flatten out those areas where there are those puddles. So for a start, it looks ridiculous. And to fix this, I need to drop the scale. And I'm going to use something very low like that. And then I'm going to set the mid level to zero. And now what that's done is it's now flattened out those areas where the puddles are. It looks shiny from the roughness. And the normals are also flat. So now we're starting to see things come together in the sense that we actually have these regions that look a little bit like puddles. And now we can play around with these different factors and we can decide how wet we want the surface and how big we want those puddles. But before I spend any more time on that, I'm going to turn on one more channel. And this is a little bit less intuitive perhaps than the other channels. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color. And the goal here is to make the puddle regions and the wet regions look darker than the dry regions. And you'll notice if you look at real pictures of puddles and wet concrete or bricks or things like that, the areas that are wet often look much darker than the dry areas. So I'm going to try and replicate that effect. To do that, I'm going to change this from mix to multiply. And finally, I'm going to change the color to a dark, a black color like that. So now what this is doing is it's taking the underlying brick color and it's multiplying by zero. 
So obviously this doesn't look right at the moment. And to fix this, you can adjust the opacity. And now we can decide how much we want to darken that underlying brick. And this can get you a pretty nice effect. But what I'm going to do is actually make it a little bit nicer using a feature that was introduced in version 3.2 of PBR Painter. And you can find that new feature underneath channel masking where you can now use a separate mask color ramp, which will apply a color ramp to the mask only for this channel. So in other words, we have an overall mask for this layer, which looks like this, but this color ramp here is going to add a color ramp just for the base color channel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that to create a nicer effect. So at the moment it looks the same because I've got these at the default values, but what you can see is when I start dragging this slider, I start to get different areas of that material being darkened by this black multiplication. And the same goes for this, I can pull this across and I start to see areas kind of lightening up because I've pulled that back. And so what I wanna do with this is I wanna create a more complex effect where I've got inside the puddles are not so dark. On the edges where it's wet, I wanna make that a bit darker and then I wanna make it nice and light where it's dry over here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add another element in this color ramp. And this is going to be over on the right hand side, which is basically going to cover the regions inside the puddle like this. So you can see now, if I change this, this color like this, I'm controlling just the areas inside the puddles. And so if I do something like that, now you can see that there's actually a change as we go from the center of puddles to the outside, where we have kind of a dark ring appearing around the puddles. And this is the basic setup. And now it's just a matter of adjusting these parameters to get the kind of desired effect. So I might actually put the wet down a little bit. And I think something like that looks pretty nice. So what I've now done is I've got a little bit darker in the center of the puddles where it's kind of wet on the surface is now very dark. And then it goes into this light color over here. So now we can see how that looks. If we just turn off the color, you can really see the difference that that makes by adding that color in this specific way. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there for now. And this is basically all set up in terms of these channels. One final thing I wanna address is the fact that realistically, if you've got puddles forming like this, you're gonna end up with water forming in these cracks in here because it doesn't really make sense for you to get this big puddle over here, but have nothing in here. And to do this, what I can actually do is use the height map from my bricks to control or to add extra water into the cracks. So I can add a new mask and I'm gonna add an image texture this time. And now I'm just going to select that bricks displacement. Now I just need to make a couple more changes to add it to this underlying puddles mask. And I'm gonna preview this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the color ramp and I'm gonna invert that because I want the mask to be highlighting the cracks, not the other way around. Now I'm gonna play around with this color ramp and I'm gonna basically pull this in so that I'm just kind of focusing on those cracks and make them really bright like that. When I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go across to previewing the whole thing. So this is the whole mask stack. So now I'm looking at the combination of these two masks. And then the final thing I wanna do is change this from mix to add. So I want to actually add the cracks in. And so we can see if we set this to zero, we're back to the normal puddles. And then as we drag this up, we start to add in those little cracks like that. And the best way to adjust this now is actually to stop previewing the mask and actually see the final result. So this is it with basically just the puddles. And what you can see is when we start to add this, we start to fill in those cracks. So that's really cool. And you can actually see that if we look from the side, it's actually looking like it's kind of filling those areas with water like that. So that's a really nice effect. And I think really important to make it look more photorealistic. Okay, so now we're basically at the end. So this is, Pretty much what I started with so let's have a look at how that looks so this is with absolutely nothing and then as we add the puddles in we can see that it's really now nicely filling in the areas that it needs to while also applying these puddles and these wet areas around the edges and then of course you can make all sorts of changes to this so if you want to dry it up a little bit you can just pull this back and now we can see that we're actually kind of removing that water from the whole thing. So that I think looks quite nice. So now it kind of looks like it's been drying for a while and it's actually removed all the water other than these fine little areas here. And then we can do the opposite and basically completely cover it in water as well. And then everything in between. 
Okay, so I'm going to leave the video there with that final result. One thing I will point out is that you're not limited to these masks. Obviously, you can add any other mask that you want. Same basic concept applies. So for example, you could add a blank mask, a blank image texture, and you could actually hand paint using PBR Painter's painting system. And then you would actually be painting on your puddles exactly where you want them. And you can mix them in any way that you want. And it will just work really nicely because you've already set up these channels in here. Anyway, that's it for me. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful and I hope to see you in another video. Cheers.